Load factor. Load factor is a non-dimensional number obtained by dividing the lift produced by the wings by aircraft weight. Load factor is given the symbol N and is equal to lift over weight. For an aircraft in straight and level flight, the load factor is equal to one. When an aircraft maneuvers, for example, turning, climbing or descending, the load factor will always be different from one. In a steady coordinated turn, the resulting g-force the aircraft experiences is created by weight and centrifugal force. The resultant g-force and therefore load factor are therefore a function of angle of bank. Load factor n equals one over cosine bank angle. In a climb or descent, load factor equals cosine climb or descent angle. The steeper the angle of climb or descent, the less the load factor will be. Stalling speed increases in proportion to the square root of load factor. Vs under the new condition equals Vs in the original 1g environment multiplied by the square root of load factor. Limit load factors. Every aircraft is designed so as to be protected against permanent deformation, which may result from structural overstress. Strength requirements are prescribed in terms of limit loads, maximum loads expected in service, and ultimate loads. Limit load multiplied by a safety factor. Consequently, there's a load factor limit for each aircraft. Note that the load factor limit depends on the type of aircraft. Limit load factors may be found in certain regulatory documents. CS23, which is the certification specification for normal utility in aerobatic aircraft, and CS25, which is the certification specification for large aeroplanes. Limit load factors. CS23 is the certification specification for normal utility aerobatic and commuter category aeroplanes and has the following subcategories. CS23 commuter, positive loading is plus 2.5 G and negative is 1 G. CS23 normal is plus 3.8 G and minus 5.2 G. CS23 utility is plus 4.4 G and minus 1.76 G. And CS23 aerobatic is plus 6 G and minus 3 G. The manoeuvring diagram. This is a certification specification for large aeroplanes. The manoeuvring diagram shows load factor versus airspeed and effectively is an envelope that the aircraft can operate within. On the horizontal axis, starting from a load factor of zero, can be seen VS1, VF, VA, VC and VD. At the 1G load factor, a line is drawn up from the zero load factor, which goes up to wing flaps up condition at point A on the envelope. These are all positive limiting load factors. Beneath the zero load factor is effectively negative G. And it can be seen that the negative G limit for safe operations or maneuvering is less. The positive limit maneuvering load factor N for any speed up to VD, the design dive speed, may not be less than 2.1 plus 24,000 divided by weight plus 10,000, except that N may not be less than 2.5 and need not be greater than 3.8, where W is the design maximum takeoff weight in pounds. The negative limit maneuvering load factor may not be less than minus one at speeds up to VC the design cruise speed.
and must vary linearly with speed from the value at VC to zero at VD, the design dive speed. Maneuvering load factors lower than those specified in this paragraph may be used if the aeroplane has design features that make it impossible to exceed these values in flight. So for some subcategories for limit load factors, CS25 aircraft flaps up, the positive load factor ranges plus 2.5 G to plus 3.8 G. Flaps down is plus 2 G. And for negative loadings, minus 1 G. Limit load factors must guarantee elastic deformation of the aircraft structure i.e. if the aeroplane geometry is changed by a load, the aeroplane must return to its original geometry when the load is removed. To calculate the ultimate load factor, the limit load factor must be multiplied by 1.5, the safety factor. For example, if the limit load factor was 280 newtons, multiply this by 1.5, to get 420 newtons. The safety factor guarantees there'll be no structural system failure if the limit load factor is exceeded by up to 1.5 times. However, there may be permanent deformation of the aeroplane geometry. Here's the maneuver envelope diagram. It's known as a VN diagram. It's essentially speed versus load factor. And again, we can see the zero load factor line. Above this is the maximum lift line going up to 3.75 or 3.8 G, above which structural failure will occur. The 2.5 G load factor, positive one, is a safe area to fly within. Between 2.5G and 3.75G or 3.8G, permanent deformation is likely to occur. Negative load factors are on the lower half of the diagram. And this goes down to minus 1G as a safe area. Larger negative load factors between 1 and minus 1.5G result in permanent deformation and larger negative load factors than 1.5 G result in structural failure. VA, the maneuvering speed, design maneuvering speed, is where the 2.5 G line drops down from the maximum lift line. Design maneuver speed, Operating outside the maneuver envelope is either impossible, for example, being above the maximum lift line at slow speeds, the aircraft will stall, or hazardous, above the maximum permissible speed. VA is design maneuver speed, the maximum speed at which the controls can be abruptly moved within the mechanical limits without exceeding the limit load factor. It's calculated by taking the stalling speed in the 1G environment and multiplying it by the square root of the limit load factor. For example, if an aircraft has a stall speed of 70 knots and a limit load factor of 2.5, what's its design maneuvering speed? We'll take the square root of 2.5 and multiply this by 70 knots to get VA. 111 knots. The gust envelope. Consider an aircraft in straight and level flight in calm air. The load factor acting on the aircraft is one. The aircraft encounters turbulent air and the vertical component of a gust suddenly increases angle of attack and results in much added lift and also load factor. In some circumstances, depending on speed and gust strength, the aircraft may stall or the ultimate load factor may be exceeded. Jet transport aircraft are designed to withstand gusts of certain strength as follows. 66, 
50 and 25 feet per second up to flight level 200, thereafter reducing to 38, 25 and 12.5 feet per second up to flight level 500. An aircraft can withstand higher gust velocities at lower speeds than at high ones, hence the reason for slowing down when experiencing turbulence. Limits of the gust load factor are lower if speed is increased. Here's a real example of a gust envelope diagram. And superimposed is the manoeuvre envelope. And you can see gusts on there of plus 15 and 30 feet per second and negative 15 and negative 30 feet per second. These start from the 1G load factor. Also is the manoeuvring envelope starting from the 0G load factor. VB, VC and VD. From the gust load envelope can be determined the speeds VB, VC and VD. VB is the design speed for maximum gust intensity. VC is design cruising speed and VD is design dive speed. VMO should not be greater than VC. Factors affecting gust load factor. An increased altitude will decrease the gust load factor. The gust load factor. And the reason is there's less lift at altitude, which means the load factor will decrease. Increased mass decreases load factor. Weight is more, so load factor is less. Increased speed increases load factor. There will be less margin available from a higher speed to the gust limiting speed. And at higher speeds, more lift is generated, so there is less margin available. Increased wing loading decreases load factor. The weight per wing area has increased, so load factor will decrease. The CL versus Alpha curve. This has an increase on gust load factor in the sense that if CL is increased, lift will increase, so load factor will increase. An up gust increases load factor. Lift has increased, so load factor will increase. Aspect ratio. This increases gust load factor. A high aspect ratio aircraft, like a glider, has long wings, so lift induced drag will be less. So lift is improved, so load factor will be improved. The lift coefficient CL of an aeroplane in steady horizontal flight is 0.42. An increase in angle of attack of 1 degree increases CL by 0.1. A vertical upgust instantly changes the angle of attack by 3 degrees. With all else being equal, speed, weight, density, wing area, what will the load factor increase by? Well, CL will increase to 0.42, which is what it was originally, plus those three degrees multiplied by 0.1, which equals 0.72. To work out the increase, divide 0.72 by the original 0.42 to get 1.71.